Okay. All right now, so we can start with the next presentation. We're going to look at the testing and lava. Uh, hi, my name is uh, Paweł Wieczorek. I uh, work at uh, Samsung R&D Institute Poland. I'm a member of uh, Tizen Common GNU Linux distribution release team. Uh, and uh, since my occupation, I'm involved in lots of uh, testing, lots of verification and validation of uh, system images for embedded Linux devices. Uh, today, I would like to be your guide uh, through a setting up of your own uh, Lava laboratory because that's something uh, we uh, did to automate uh, most of our work and to focus on uh, much more interesting uh, tasks that we uh, have to uh, do in our daily jobs. I will start with a short uh, introduction to what uh, Lava actually is. Then I will move to the uh, main section, uh, uh, which is uh, actual setup of the laboratory. I would like to share with you uh, some tools that we uh, used as well to simplify your work even further. Uh, next, I will uh, give you some uh, hints uh, what can be done next. And uh, if uh, there's still time, we'll have a uh, um, short Q&A session and some uh, final thoughts. So what LAVA actually is? LAVA stands for Linaro Automated uh, Validation Architecture and uh, uh, serves uh, as an automation system for deploying operating uh, system on uh, not only um, embedded Linux devices, but also uh, any kind of uh, emulator uh, or virtual device. Uh, it uh, can deploy uh, rootfs, uh, kernel, DTB, uh, anything that is needed to boot up your device. Uh, once it uh, prepares uh, your device, uh, it allows you to run boot, uh, bootloader, or even system level uh, tests on your device. But some extra hardware might be required for the uh, full support of all Lava features. And when actually uh, does it come in handy? Uh, in the simplest use case, uh, with just a single board, uh, for example, Big and Bo Bone Black, which is a reference device for many uh, on open source uh, projects, it's easy uh, to, to manage just one on your desk. Uh, also, with just a single instance, you don't have to worry about uh, managing resources of your uh, miniature uh, board farms. Uh, but sooner or later, uh, you might uh, come across some new interesting target devices you would like to support uh, for your open source project. Uh, for example, Arctic 10 uh, in top left corner or um, uh, Android TXU3 on the bottom. Uh, that's uh, when things might get complicated. Uh, adding to that, uh, even new architecture like uh, Mino boards, uh, which run on uh, Intel-based chip, uh, might complicate it even th further, uh, because all of these devices uh, have to be flashed in a completely different way uh, and uh, support different uh, communication uh, ways between your test server and your actual device. What if you have to complicate things even more and have to mm, manage a whole built uh, farm, uh, a whole board farm, actually, uh, with uh, multiple uh, instances of each of your device. Well, that's where Lava uh, comes into place, uh, because it provides an abstraction layer for the uh, whole board farm. Uh, this way, all the uh, complex device management is put onto the lava itself and is no longer your own task. Also, many different uh, devices have various capabilities. Uh, it would be uh, much easier if you don't have to worry about uh, finding an actual device that supports all the capabilities you need for tests. And uh, with lava, uh, you can only uh, define what do you need 
and this way, if your board farm has a proper device, you'll get uh, what you requested. Also, uh, you don't have to worry about scheduling and dispatching multiple tasks uh, on uh, numerous devices. So if you would like to parallelize all of your tests and get your results uh, quicker, that's what uh, uh, Lava uh, can provide you. Uh, and the, um, what you will get out of the box is a unified device environment. So uh, each uh, developer uh, does not uh, see a uh, board anymore. Uh, it's just a generic device which can be flashed with uh, um, operating system image and uh, which uh, can uh, get some tests to run uh, and uh, all the developer sees uh, is just a um, bunch of results that he gets with no worries uh, about um, flashing device, about uh, running, or, uh, running tests on them or how to get results back. Uh, also, uh, the direct uh, connection to the uh, devices is still uh, available in uh, Lava, for example, via hacking sessions or uh, board overseer. But uh, these topics uh, are uh, more complex than uh, just setting up, which we will be focusing on today. Uh, Lava is currently in, used, uh, in use by uh, multiple projects, by multiple uh, companies, for example, uh, by uh, Linaro for their uh, board farm in Cambridge, by Kernel CI for boot tests of uh, current uh, kernel trees, by Automotive uh, Grade Linux and Debian uh, as for uh, GNU Linux uh, distributions. So once uh, we all uh, realized what can we get from uh, on Lava Laboratory. Let's go to the uh, actual setup. Uh, for, just for start, uh, it's uh, the best to focus on standalone instance with uh, no remote uh, workers, with uh, no uh, distributed environment. Standalone instance will uh, allow to get uh, the most of Lava uh, as quickly as possible. We'll also uh, focus just on the virtual uh, devices and uh, the tests that uh, should be run at the beginning uh, should be as simple as possible. Uh, just health checks uh, if uh, nothing else comes uh, um, to you uh, during the setup. Why is that? Mainly to reduce the comp uh, um, complexity of the whole process. Also, it's best to familiarize with uh, possibly new workflow of uh, your uh, testing automation procedures uh, by not caring about uh, some uh, caveats of uh, specific boards, but having just uh, virtual devices. Also, it's uh, much easier to understand Lava concepts uh, when you have the well-tested uh, and uh, mm, quickly to set up uh, environment on your hands. And uh, lastly, uh, although uh, Lava will allow you to reuse your current uh, test cases, it's uh, best to postpone the process of uh, learning the uh, new ways of uh, running your tests on the uh, Lava board farm. Uh, as for requirements for your uh, own Lava laboratory, the only one is to have uh, a Debian-based uh, machine. Currently, support for Ubuntu uh, is frozen. Uh, more uh, details you can find uh, in the link uh, on the uh, presentations. Mm, but uh, for now, any Debian instance uh, that you have to spare will be uh, sufficient. Exactly, that's the host. Uh, if 
um, you'd like um, to uh, run other uh, GNU Linux distribution on the actual uh, device under tests, I believe currently um, Open Embedded, uh, Fedora, Debian are uh, supported out of the box uh, and uh, uh, other distributions uh, will require a little tinkering. Uh, as for uh, other requirements that you'll need uh, to set it up, uh, of course, system image for your uh, Linux board, uh, some health check job, which uh, together with system image is already provided uh, in Lava by Linaro. Also, device type uh, template, and for QMU, which uh, will focus today, uh, it's already available in uh, Lava, in um, default Lava distribution uh, as well. And uh, actually, the only uh, file that you would need uh, to set it up uh, is a device dictionary, which uh, serves as a definition of the instance of uh, your device. And for QMU, it's just uh, three lines you see on the bottom, uh, which uh, only gives you an uh, info uh, which uh, device template should be in use, uh, um, assign MAC address, and set um, available memory. Uh, thanks to the um, uh, Lava packagers, all you have to do on your host machine uh, is to prepare a database for the uh, Lava and uh, let install uh, meta package. Uh, let install uh, Lava meta package. And all you you'll need uh, further uh, is resolved automatically uh, with uh, dependencies. As for the uh, common post install tasks, uh, default uh, Apache configuration is already available as well. And if you uh, disable um, default uh, pages and uh, uh, and replace it with uh, Lava server uh, configuration with enabling of uh, two additional modules for Apache, you're all set to go as for the uh, host configuration. Of course, you'll have to um, create super user for your Lava laboratory. And finally, actually add the devices. Adding the devices uh, consists of uh, three steps. First of all, you have to um, add device type to your uh, Lava laboratory with the uh, first uh, uh, command on the um, bottom uh, part. Then you have to uh, inform your Lava laboratory about a new instance of uh, your um, device. And finally, uh, define all the remaining uh, information about your uh, virtual board uh, instance with a three-line uh, file you saw earlier. Uh, actually, uh, two more things are uh, to be done uh, to uh, have the whole uh, system fully operational. Uh, you'll have to uh, assign a, a worker for the um, for your device uh, and uh, define a health check so that uh, Lava can uh, always uh, uh, verify that uh, the device is fully operational. Uh, once this is done, you're good to go. You may safely uh, submit your uh, test cases. Uh, Lava supports both uh, CLI interface uh, for the uh, automation of the whole process, as well as uh, web uh, UI for quick tests uh, if you would like to uh, check your um, new changes uh, quickly. Uh, having it uh, all already set up, you uh, might uh, consider uh, some um, tools I would like to propose to you, which uh, may uh, make your future deployments uh, easier, quicker, uh, and uh, uh, safer, uh, having it uh, all in a reproducible way. For start, I would like uh, 
uh, to share with you uh, the configuration management uh, suite. Uh, for uh, Lava, it, uh, it is equally uh, well whichever uh, tool you'd like. So if you prefer Saltstack, uh, Chef, Puppet, uh, or Ansible, uh, it, uh, mm, it won't matter as long as you'll have a reproducible environment for all of your uh, future deployments and the same exact configuration on both your testing environment and your production environment. So choose your personal favorite uh, and uh, mm, Ansible roles should be uh, published for uh, setting up uh, the fully virtual just uh, starting uh, Lava instance uh, in the mm, next uh, couple of uh, days. Uh, as for the uh, environment virtualization, which I believe uh, you will be interested in uh, having for your first uh, Lava instance, you may choose from uh, different uh, virtualization providers. I would like to propose uh, two, depending on uh, how much time do you have and uh, how much flexibility do you need uh, from uh, the uh, provider itself. Uh, if you need to have uh, it set up uh, really quickly, uh, Vagrant would be your choice. Uh, it uh, allows you to bring up uh, new instances uh, instantly, and it provides you with a wide range of uh, pre-built uh, machines via Atlas service. But do be careful with uh, pre-built uh, images, uh, since you have no control on what uh, actually is on the system image. Uh, if you would like to um, tinker more, to adjust it to uh, your needs, uh, you might consider uh, Libvirt. Currently, uh, maybe one of the most flexible uh, tools for uh, these kinds of uh, tasks. Uh, still equipped with uh, really user-friendly uh, both CLI and GUI tools. Uh, once you uh, have it uh, all set up, you might uh, consider your next steps. And uh, one of uh, the possible um, follow-ups to setting up new Lava Laboratory uh, could be adding uh, completely new device types to Lava. This time, uh, actual devices, physical devices. And uh, all the uh, documentation for doing so is already uh, available. You might also be interested in uh, writing your own test or migrating your current uh, test cases uh, to Lava. Uh, default Lava documentation uh, have you, uh, has uh, you covered as well. But uh, if you'd be uh, more interested in contributing to some uh, other project, you uh, might consider adding your Lava instance uh, to the uh, kernel CI project. Uh, you would, uh, I believe you would also benefit from familiarizing with uh, uh, both AGL test framework setup instructions uh, and uh, with uh, documents that uh, Civil Infrastructure Platform Testing Initiative prepared. And uh, if you would uh, prefer uh, to um, watch uh, and listen instead of uh, reading, uh, you might be interested uh, in these uh, three talks. Uh, a little more uh, detailed uh, introduction uh, to uh, Lava V2 by Bill Fletcher uh, or uh, having uh, direct access to your devices within uh, Lava Laboratory instance um, by uh, free electrons. You also uh, could benefit from the uh, next uh, presentation that is right uh, after this one uh, by Jan Simon Miller. Of course, uh, if you would need uh, any help, any further help, uh, the um, exhaustive uh, documentation is already available at uh, each instance of Lava Laboratory. Uh, and uh, if you would like uh, some um, direct uh, contact, uh, 
uh, Lava users, uh, share their questions on mailing list, uh, either on mailing list or uh, on uh, Linaro dash Lava uh, IRC channel on Freenode. Uh, to sum it up, uh, to sum it all up, um, I hope that uh, I showed you that uh, um, initial setup of uh, Lava Laboratory uh, is uh, pretty easy thanks to uh, um, already uh, in place package repositories for Debian platform, uh, and that uh, setup uh, is. Um, instant once you uh, know what to expect and uh, what do you have to prepare before. Mm. Also, uh, environment unification for various uh, device type uh, types is something that you might benefit from uh, in uh, your uh, automated uh, testing process. And with Lava, you get uh, parallel test execution uh, with no cost and uh, you don't have to manage all of the devices by yourself. Uh, also, developers uh, do not have to uh, worry about uh, managing devices all by themselves. Uh, this responsibility can be moved to the uh, Lava Laboratory uh, operators. Uh, and as for the um, final thoughts I would like to share with you, uh, is that uh, although uh, it might seem intimidating at first with uh, such an exhaustive uh, documentation uh, as uh, Lava has, uh, it actually uh, has no downsides. When you get through it or uh, you have someone who got through it earlier and shares uh, just a quick start, you get uh, everything you need. Also, uh, there is absolutely no need to reinvent the wheel with uh, modern uh, testing laboratory uh, management uh, software. It's already there, just uh, mm, waiting for you to use it. And uh, although the initial cost uh, might be high if uh, you're not familiar with uh, all these uh, mm, tools, uh, full automation mm, always pays off in the long term. Mm, if you uh, have some questions, I would be more than happy to uh, answer them. Since we've uh, got uh, still a few minutes. Yeah. Hi. Mm. <laughs> you, would, you, would have to, you would have to write your own uh, deploy mechanism. Okay. So right now, right now it supports TFTP and NSS. Yeah. If, if you really want to pump something up to a microcontroller, you would have to extend that. Yeah, that's what we have done the extension. So um, it's great that you, uh, yeah, sure. So, uh, good job.
Mm, great. Okay. Suppose that you have uh, two boards that belong together, like a mother board and a child board, each have uh, an indi uh, independent shell, and you want to write a test that uh, does some actions on the, on the one on the mother board and another one on the child board, and then see that things are fine. Is that possible in uh, with Java? Mm, I believe so, but uh, I. Uh, I'm not an uh, experienced user enough to uh, answer your question fully. I believe that uh, you would have to add uh, two different devices, and uh, if the um, child one uh, has direct access, that there would be um, no trouble in that. And uh, if uh, it has not, so m maybe some tun tunneling through the parent device would be required as well. If uh, there is no more question, thank you for your attention.